We are recording today's session so that people who are not able to make it at this time can go back and watch the recording. And we'll go ahead and get started. It's uh, one minute after two o'clock and all of our facilitators are here. Let me introduce today's facilitators and then we'll do a little bit of housekeeping and uh, getting you familiar with Blackboard Collaborate or Illuminate Live uh, before we get started here. Today's facilitators, we have doing a conference overview, our conference chair, Peter Shea, who is from the State University of New York at Albany. For the program overview portion, we have our program chair, Ray Schroeder. He is with the University of Illinois Springfield. For our conference update section, Christine Hinckley, who is Sloan C's Director of Conference Services, will be taking the lead on that section. And I will introduce myself. I will be the webinar producer for you today. My name is Katie Fife Schuster, and I'm the Director of Conference Administration with the Sloan Consortium. Really quickly, let me familiarize you with Illuminate Live or Blackboard Collaborate as they are becoming known these days. If you have not used this application before, you'll see a participant window. Actually, before I get into that, I do recommend that you go to your view menu and your layout and choose wide layout. I find that is, for myself anyway, the most user-friendly layout. You can switch your layout to be whichever one suits you, but the images you'll see here will refer to the wide layout. You'll see a participant window on the upper left of your wide layout, and that will have a list of everyone who is participating in the webinar today. From this window, right underneath at the bottom of it, you will see a couple of icons. There's a raise and lower hand icon, um, some four, and a set of four emoticons that you can use to give us some feedback. If you like something, um, you can use a smiley face. If you are confused or things are moving too quickly for you, go ahead and use your confusion face. Uh, if you would like to give some applause or approval, go ahead and click your applause emoticon. Or if there is something that you don't like or don't agree with, you can feel free to use your disapproval icon. We don't see that one very often. Um, so hopefully we won't see too many of those today either. If we do ask a question, and we can ask for some feedback by the green check and the red X. Uh, if so, for example, if I say, have any, has anyone, please indicate with a green check or a red X if you have used Illuminate Live or Blackboard Collaborate in the past. Go ahead and click on your green checks or your red Xs. Great, so it looks like a majority of people have used Illuminate Live or Blackboard Collaborate in the past. There are a few of you who are not familiar with it. So we'll hopefully take care of that in these couple minutes here. If you need to leave for any moment or step away, you can use that little door icon to step away from the session. And then you can click on it again to step back into the session. There is a text messaging box. Using the wide layout is the middle column right next to the participant window. You can use this to type comments, send text messages. I do want to let you know that uh, all messages can be seen by the moderators, so there are no private messages here. So we do appreciate if you keep it on to the webinar topic today. That being said, uh, if there are any questions, or if there are not any questions, I will hand the mic over to Peter, our conference chair, who will be giving you a conference overview. If you do have questions, feel free to type in the text box or raise your hand. Go ahead, Peter. OK, thanks, Katie. Can everyone hear me OK? Uh, my mic was off there for a second. OK, I see a smiley face from some people. Great. Um, I just want to welcome everybody today. Um, I'm Peter Shea. I am uh, faculty at the University of Albany and uh, conference chair for this year's conference. Um, I think 
without a doubt, this is going to be the the biggest and the best uh, Sloan C International Conference on Online Learning ever. We have a, a bigger program, more participants, and a, and a great new venue. And we're really, really excited about the uh, conference this year. And we just think it's going to be terrific. Um, I, just as a point of uh, information, this is the first of two webinars. Uh, this this one that we're doing today is going to cover the on-site program, and there will be a second webinar that will cover uh, virtual attendee options, and that second webinar will occur on October 20th. So if um, folks are interested in the virtual attendee option, that's a, there's another separate informational event for that uh, option. Today I'm just going to briefly uh, go through and talk about these three things, an introduction to this year's conference theme. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about the general schedule and then uh, some details about uh, networking opportunities that are scheduled into the conference and talk a little bit about this year's keynote and plenary speakers. And then I'm going to hand it off to uh, our program chair, Ray Schroeder, who will go into a little bit more detail about the program for the conference this year. So the conference theme this year, online learning, teaching, and research in the new media ecology. I don't think uh, it will come as a surprise to any of the folks on the call today that um, you know the expansion of online learning and teaching uh, into online environments uh, is unprecedented. Um, the Sloan uh, Center for uh, uh, Research at Babson College documents that there are about five and a half to six million uh, college students enrolled in at least one online course, and that number is growing about 20 percent a year. So we're seeing pretty explosive growth in the uh, online teaching and learning uh, enterprise across the United States, and we're seeing that expand outside uh, higher education into pre-college settings. So there's uh, it's an exciting time and a rapidly developing uh, time. The sort of new uh, ecology for learning with the development of the fast development of new technologies uh, creates a lot of questions and we hope that we can address some of the central questions and concerns at this year's conference. We have a, I think a really great lineup of people to address questions about uh, on this theme. Um, uh, and I'll get to the, those speakers in one minute. But before we talk about the speakers, uh, we're going to go over real quickly the general schedule uh, for this year's conference. On Tuesday, the 8th of November, uh, registration opens at 6 p.m. Um, so if you're arriving early, you can, you can uh, and as many people are this year arriving early, you can get uh, registered. Uh, Wednesday, November 9th, we have pre-conference workshops and an opening uh, general session with uh, Lee Rainey, uh, the director of the Pew Internet and American Life Project at 415. And there will be a welcome reception. I'll talk a little bit more about all of these opportunities in the next slide. On Thursday, November 10th, we'll have a plenary by Cable Green. And there will be a full day of sessions on the Thursday. And on Friday, we'll have a closing plenary by Howard Rangold and um, a full day of sessions on Friday as well. So it looks like it's going to be a terrific uh, uh, lineup. Um, some of the special events and opportunities for uh, networking with, with your colleagues and with peers at the, the conference on Wednesday, as I mentioned, there will be that an open uh, welcome reception immediately following the keynote speech by Lee Rainey. And that's going to happen from 5.45 to 7.30 in the exhibit hall. Um, on Thursday, there's another uh, uh, terrific event. Uh, the Sloan C Awards Luncheon will be held from 12 to 1.30 p.m. Um, there's a $12 fee for that, um, and you have to RSP, RSVP during registration to uh, attend the awards luncheon. But it's going to be a really um, a nice event, and most of that, uh, the cost of that is being under underwritten by the Sloan, um, Sloan Consortium that's organizing the event. Uh, there's uh, a poster session on Thursday between 4.30 and 6 p.m. And there's going to be actually refreshments served at that uh, and you know, additional opportunities for networking with people and, and seeing some great posters. And immediately following that uh, session, 
uh, there will be a complimentary entrance to the uh, Epcot Food and Wine Festival uh, at Disney uh, that's provided by the conference. Um, and after the uh, Food and Wine Festival dinners on your own, there will be a, a fireworks show and a dessert and uh, drink uh, reception from 8 to 9.30 at the Worldview Plaza West. Um, so th again, lots of opportunities for networking and interacting with uh, uh, participants at the conference. Um, and just be uh, sure to uh, RSVP for that event during your registration. You can also join other attendees in the exhibit hall each morning and afternoon for extended networking coffee breaks. We uh, recognize that every year when we ask uh, participants in the conference what, what they'd like to see more of, uh, one of the most common answers is opportunities for networking with other folks at the conference. So we're trying to be responsive to requests that we've received in the past uh, or you know, feedback from surveys that we got in the past and really try to make this an event that really meets the needs of uh, conference participants. As I mentioned, uh, we have a really great lineup of uh, keynote and plenary speakers. Uh, how many people on the call uh, here are familiar with the Pew Internet and American Life Project? Uh, if you just want to either you know, raise your hand, smile, clap, uh, any one of those things. Uh, I think you know, this is really, uh, on a national scale, the uh, organization that has uh, its fingers on the pulse of how uh, you know, new technologies and the uh, internet are uh, changing how uh, how people live, how people learn. And for the past 10 years, Lee Rainey has been heading up that uh, that project. They refer to their organization as a fact tank uh, rather than a think tank because they really engage in the collection of facts. They primarily, through survey research, uh, get a handle on what's going on in the United States as new technologies develop. And I think. His, his presentation, he's particularly well uh, situated to address questions about uh, teaching and learning in, in the new media ecology. And uh, I think he's going to do a, a terrific job. Cable Green, uh, second plenary speaker, he is the director for global education at Creative Commons. Um, he's probably the premier uh, thinker on open education and the changing landscape in open educational resources. And if anyone's interested in OER, I think uh, having an opportunity to listen to Cable Green, it's just a really a, a, a terrific, terrific opportunity. So I, I highly encourage folks. And on Friday, Howard uh, Rheingold, um, sort of a, an icon in this area, he's written uh, several best-selling uh, books on uh, uh, the new media ecology. Um, he practically coined the term uh, virtual reality um, and he's the, the author of uh, Smart Mobs and several other books. He's, whenever Howard uh, gives a uh, talk, he's got some really terrific uh, insights and ideas to share. So I think it's going to be a, a wonderful lineup of keynote and plenary speakers and uh, I'm going to hand it off to Ray Schroeder, our program chair, to talk a little bit more detail about uh, other opportunities in the program. Yeah, thank you, Peter. Thanks, right. It really is a pleasure to be here, to be able to talk with uh, so many of you whom I'll be seeing down in Orlando. I'm really excited about the event. As Peter had said, uh, not only is this going to be uh, most likely the largest uh, uh, conference, we are running well ahead of uh, last year, but also the best. And, uh, I've attended uh, 10 or 12 of these and I'm really excited about this upcoming one. Um, we have so many wonderful presentations uh, during the event. Um, if I were to take uh, just one minute for each one, uh, it would take uh, about seven hours. Uh, we have more than 350 events and uh, uh, and I really would uh, uh, love to talk about all of them, but I'd like to, uh, but we just don't have the time. So I'll, I'll highlight a few of these for you and give you a sense of the tracks and uh, uh, some of the exciting presentations. Um, certainly our pre-conferences are uh, where it all begins on Wednesday. We have two six-hour day-long sessions. One is Google for Administrators, the other Google for Educators, uh, uh, 
uh, provided by uh, the Gwen Group, and I'll mention that in just a moment. We have uh, three-hour morning sessions and three-hour afternoon sessions, um, all taking place then on uh, Wednesday. Um, the first uh, day-long sessions are going to be uh, offered by the Google Workshops for Educators Network. GWEN, G-W-E-N, an online support community. And they're going to provide one with an emphasis on educators and the other with an emphasis on administrators. So uh, you'll be able to pick your uh, uh, which side you'd like to examine in these day long. And I, I hasten to add there was a break for lunch and other breaks built into those sessions. But uh, you'll be able to choose uh, which one you might want to attend. Um, there are some half-day pre-conference workshops in the morning. Um, a new movement, uh, I say new, it, it, uh, it really is gaining traction in universal design. And our good friends at Empire State College uh, up in the SUNY system will be leading a morning session on that topic. And of course, Sloan C is known perhaps more for learning effectiveness than anything else. And we have assembled a great expert panel uh, to lead a morning pre-conference hands-on workshop on learning effectiveness. From training to experience, a phased approach is uh, yet another of the workshops. And then for those of you who may not be familiar with MOOCs, MOOCs are massive open online classes. I had the pleasure of coordinating one this summer. Uh, and as the Chronicle for Higher Ed described, uh, it is when you offer a class and invite the world. Uh, for us, the world was uh, 2,675 different people in 70 countries who attended that EDU MOOC. And we'll be talking about that, how to plan MOOCs, where it fits into the curriculum, how it might be used by colleges and universities to advance their programs and to uh, provide a larger, uh, to a larger audience uh, an open learning experience. And of course, one of the most important topics of the year that has really afflicted, I'll say, um, afflicted may be a bit pejorative, but at least has affected all of us, is the whole state authorization uh, and regulation of online programs. And we have three of the best uh, to talk about that. Bruce Shalhoub, of course, from SREB, Russ Poland from WCET, and Nancy Williamson, UMUC. Very important uh, pre-conference workshop, how to meet the rules and uh, uh, evolving regulations from states uh, regarding online learning. Um, the afternoon workshops will include uh, the move from Second Life to Open Sims uh, with a great duo. Uh, this movement from, uh, from Second Life, which had, uh, continues to provide some wonderful virtual world environments, but is a little more complex than uh, some people are uh, comfortable with, to the Open Sim movement, which is is uh, easier for a larger group of people to use. The assessment and evaluation, which is critical in so many of our institutions. Uh, we have Kedri Lewis, uh, one of our wonderful IELOL uh, graduates, and Jennifer McVeigh-Dyke from Southern Oregon University offering uh, this, which really strikes to the very core of uh, the delivery of so many of our programs as we all are being asked to complete an assessment and evaluation so we can have a continuous cycle of improvement in our online learning initiatives. Well, access and opportunity, the blended approach, uh, Tanya Houston from the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee and Mary Nemec now at the University of Nebraska, formerly of the University of Illinois Chicago, uh, together uh, two of the national experts in this field of blended learning. And finally, Michael Cheney from uh, my campus here at the University of Illinois Springfield will be leading a session on social media and online learning. You know, what's interesting about Michael is that he uh, presented a class this uh, past year uh, on the impact of the Beatles in American society, ultimately 
uh, something on the order of two million downloads of his lectures were made through uh, iTunes U. So uh, that you know, he has much to share with us about a way in which to uh, broaden the impact of your class into the hundreds of thousands and and even millions. Well, in the afternoon, pre-conferences, data analytics, Phil Ice and Wally Boston from the American Public University System joined Karen Swan from UIS and Sebastian Diaz from West Virginia University. These are experts. They really lead the way in predictive data analytics. What data do we want to gather? Uh, from our students and how can we use that data to best serve online students? How can we predict success or predict students who might have challenges down the line? So this is really a, a, a wonderful session. I've had the pleasure of working with uh, these people and they certainly know what they're talking about. Also, I'll note in the afternoon, there's going to be a closed session for IELOL participants. Um, the LOL is not laughing out loud. Rather, it is uh, for our institute for emerging leaders in online learning. Um, we have just uh, completed the face-to-face -face section for the third year, and you'll see dozens of those who have participated in the Emerging Leaders Institute, uh, they'll have ribbons on their tags. And they are, in fact, Emerging Leaders in Online Learning. So just a heads up as you go through sessions and as you attend the, uh, the vendors hall, uh, the exhibit hall, you'll see these folks. Be sure to greet them warmly. These are uh, uh, those persons at uh, institutions across the country who are moving into leadership in online learning. Well, we have multiple tracks. And uh, we added a new track this year, uh, combined a couple of others. And I, I want to uh, mention each of the tracks and point to at least one of the sessions in each one. The learning effectiveness track, again, that's what we're really known for. That is the focus of what we're doing. Because if we're not successful in accomplishing quality learning outcomes, then we may as well not be doing this. Well, the best in track this year was chosen is the use of multimedia to enhance teaching, social, and cognitive presence in online courses. It sounds like community of inquiry to me, teaching presence, social presence, and cognitive presence. Wendy McDonough from UMUC will be presenting this. This is one of the best tracks to attend to discover new research and new practices. So keep your eye out for that in the program. You'll see a, a long list of these sessions. And we try to give you an opportunity so that each hour or each uh, at each time, you'll be able to uh, attend one of them. New this year is the Open Educational Resources Track. And uh, I'm very excited about this. And the Cable Green will be one of our plenary speakers. Uh, this is a huge movement in online learning. The open resources is impacting all of us, impacting us in small ways, also in large ways. The best in track this year, architecture and impact of an open, online, remixable, and multimedia rich Algebra 1 course uh, from Monterey Institute for Technology and Education. And this is that new track this year. So you'll see some interesting new presentations in the OER track, Open Educational Resources. Well, traditionally, our largest uh, track has been Technology Emerging Environments. Best in track this year, Turning Knowledge into Action, Contextual Learning and Natural Assessment. Michael Watkins from Toolwire is presenting this one. This attracts so many proposals. And you know, while we've ended up with 350 uh, presentations, uh, actually probably a few more than that this year, uh, we had to turn away others. And I guess that's my only regret that uh, we weren't able to accept all of the proposals that we received among the many tracks. Uh, so uh, technology emerging environments, and you can always find some new tools uh, available to you in that track. The Student Services Learner Support track is uh, best in track this year, meeting accreditation requirements. Are you serving distance learners? And uh, this is really a meaningful 
presentation from Kimberly Hardy and Katie Meyer Griffith from Florida State College at Jacksonville. Um, obviously, accreditation is critical to all of us. It doesn't happen every 10 years, not just every 10 years. It happens all the time. We have to maintain um, our rigorous assessment and our service to students throughout the year. So student services and learner support, great place to learn new tools, tips, techniques, ways that you can better serve those students at a distance. Well, faculty and professional development and support, these are two tracks where we saw a lot of parallels and we, we pushed these two together so that we could best uh, create synergies between professional development and faculty development and support. The best in track, uh, it's not rocket science, or is it? And that, of course, from Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University, uh, large-scale quality engineering and distance learning programs. Uh, a great topic, great group of people at Embry-Riddle, and uh, some wonderful examples. I had a chance to look at some of the other presentation proposals in faculty and professional development and support. This is a great track and a way that, that we can uh, discover new techniques, again, new ways that we can better support those faculty members, which results in greater learning and retention and overall improvement in our field. Leadership values in society, as I note at the bottom of the slide, the track of deep reflection and visioning, best in track from SUNY Empire State, uh, challenging leadership and ownership collaborating and teaching, learning about diversity, and certainly an important topic for us all. So leadership values in society track will prompt you to reflect and to, uh, to begin to share a vision with others in our field. And the K-12 online, which uh, Peter had mentioned in the early uh, uh, presentation this afternoon, is the fastest growing aspect of our field. K-12 online learning is growing far more rapidly, even than we are here, uh, many of us in higher education. So K-12 online, an important track. It's critical to follow their developments. We can learn from them. They can learn from us. It's a great opportunity for all of us to share ideas and to build the transition between K-12 and higher education. The best in track this year is student to student online coaching, the case of math coaching from the KTH Royal Institute of Technology. And uh, hope you get to take in one or more of those sessions. Well, we do have a number of featured sessions. These are double length sessions. They're the ones that the program committee solicited because they knew that there'd be a lot of interest in these areas. So here's a quick list of some of those topics. Uh, the annual survey of trends, which uh, again, Peter had referenced, it's, it's important to follow uh, the development of trends in um, in online learning. And it's not just the total numbers in that report. It's a very rich report looking at where the chief uh, academic officers and higher ed officers uh, at colleges and universities and uh, other post-secondary institutions believe online learning is moving. And uh, um, what, what are the uh, uh, motivations for moving online. So there's a real depth of analysis of information in our field. And the media around the US turned to this report again and again and again. It really it helped shape uh, the direction in which this country moves forward. It reflects to us what we've done, but it also it allows us then to make policies that build on those decisions. Well, the wonderful quality scorecard that is being developed by the Sloan Consortium is one that allows us to take a look at quality in programs, not just courses, but online programs. And uh, we have featured sessions as well on community building, the, uh, the wonderful, very large grant program, the Next Generation Learning Challenge Grant Program that Educause, Gates, and others have contributed to uh, public slash for-profit, the impact on students, which uh, is a continuing point of discussion for so many of us, and state regulation and policy making, which again harkens back to state authorization, et cetera, uh, some of the new rules that we're beginning to face uh, in online learning. 
Well, the Sloan C vision for scale, predictive data analytics, big data. That is generating very large data sets from which we all can gather information. So I know one of the topics that will be talked about in that session is the development of a data set with hundreds of thousands of data points for which or to which we'll have access to help us predict success for our own students and to run trials and conduct research. On the move, I have a good fortune to work with this one, mobile online learning, and there's a lot going on in this field. It's not just tablets, but <laughs> but it's hard to underestimate. I mean, it is huge, the development of uh, the iPad and associated tablet technologies and the ways in which they're changing, changing our online learning. Authorization, accreditation, access, and uh, effective practices 2011. So, so many of the featured sessions. Well, as I said, it's give me a minute for each, and we'll still be here at 8 o'clock. So, uh, 350 sessions, rich sessions, lots of research, incredible ideas, opportunities to collaborate with people, share ideas. You might even pull some of those presenters aside and maybe do a short interview, maybe a brief recording. You pull out your cell phone and, and get, get them on uh, video for five minutes so you can show what they have to say to your provost or your chancellor or your class. Well, next Christine Hinckley is up to tell us a bit more about uh, updates on the conference. Thank you, Ray, and welcome to everybody. I'm glad to spend a few moments just talking about the details of the conference, how you register, and a few other items like that. The registration is open now. Early bird registration ends October 9th. And as you can see, there are a number of different registration types that you can partake in. Um, Obviously, for Sloan C members, we offer a special rate, uh, 445 for early bird and 495 after the early bird deadline of October 9th. Um, if you're not a Sloan C member, the registration is $495 and 545 after the end of early bird. Additionally, there are group registration options for three or more. There's single day rates if you're only able to join us for a single day. If you're a you know, um, have some kind of conflict that prevents you from coming for the entire conference. If you're a full-time student, we offer full-time student uh, registration with uh, proof that you're a full-time student at a significantly um, reduced rate for students. Uh, there are pre-conference workshops, um, as Ray mentioned, and those are $125 for a half-day workshop or $275 for the two um, Google full-day workshops. And that registration fee does include a box lunch. Um, whether you're attending half-day or full-day, you do get lunch um, along with your workshop registration. Uh, the other item that I haven't mentioned that I kind of skipped over there is the virtual attendee option. As Peter mentioned, uh, we'll be having a preview webinar on October 20th about this option. And uh, basically, we'll cover um, a lot of different items of how you attend virtually, what's going to be included in that program, that type of thing. Um, if you're not able to join us live and, and uh, choose the virtual option, then uh, the registration fee is, is uh, $99 until October 9th. $109 after that, and uh, that includes uh, basically keynote plenaries and the featured uh, sessions best in tracks, so, and maybe a few other sessions as well. So um, that's an option if you're not able to attend on site. If you're not currently a Sloan C member, um, during uh, the whole registration process throughout the conference, um, we offer a special promotion for conference attendees to become Sloan C members at $72. Uh, the normal fee for a Sloan C individual membership is $120. So this is a great deal. And one of the major advantages of this uh, is that for future conferences, if you decide to join us for um, any or all of our three conferences in 2012, um, you get a $50 uh, uh, discount for your registration for future conferences. 
um, plus a number of other benefits for um, uh, discounted workshops and uh, the, that type of thing. You, be, you get um, access to all the journals, the forums, website materials, uh, things like that with your membership. So I do urge you to become a member if you are not already. Uh, we'd like to ask you to tell your colleagues um, that you're attending this conference. Our uh, hashtag um, for Twitter is ALN uh, 2011 for this conference. And of course, Sloan C, uh, we tweet. We're on Facebook. Uh, we're on LinkedIn. Um, as mentioned earlier, if you'd like to share this uh, preview with uh, your colleagues um, in with the idea that they might be interested in attending. The link will be under conference news on the website. And you'll be able to uh, see this whole recording, including the slides, and uh, send that link to anyone that might be interested. Another thing that I'd like to urge you to do is uh, sign up for conference updates. Um, this will allow you to receive the latest news about the conference as soon as it happens. Again, you'll find that link under conference news. It's, it's on the website. It's very easy to sign up. There are a couple of free webinars. Um, if you'd like to get an idea of, of you know, some of the benefits that uh, being a Sloan C member offers, um, I urge you to attend um, you know, any of our free webinars that will give you an idea of what a webinar is like with us. Um, for those, the upcoming ones that we have are the Sloan C College uh, PASS webinar. Um, College PASS is a faculty development program. It's a membership benefit option that provides online workshop seats at a bulk discount. So in this webinar, the Sloan C staff will explain the details of the um, College PASS faculty development and online workshop program. Um, pricing discounts, membership benefits, and workshops will be discussed in detail. The other upcoming free webinar that we have is um, Classroom Salon, which is an online platform developed at Carnegie Mellon University. Um, it transforms the traditionally isolated act of reading course documents and interpretation into a collaborative enterprise for constructing and sharing knowledge. So in this webinar, you'll learn how to integrate Classroom Salon into your existing course and make learning a much more uh, rewarding experience when conducted in a social setting. So if you're interested in attending either of these free webinars, if you go to the Sloan Consortium homepage, you'll see a link there for webinars, and you'll be able to register there. And I think uh, Katie is supplying the link for that. As mentioned, the next preview webinar, we'll go over the virtual attendee option, um, will be Thursday, October 20th from 2 to 3 p.m. We don't have the uh, registration link up under conference news yet. It will be up there uh, by the end of the week. So um, if you're interested, and again, if you sign up for conference news, we'll send you updates uh, with that link. And uh, I mentioned uh, earlier that we have three conferences. Um, in 2012, our three conferences will be the ninth Annual Blended Learning Conference and Workshop. We'll also have the Emerging Technologies for Online Learning Symposium in the July time frame, and then, of course, our annual conference in the fall in Orlando. Uh, the, after uh, this uh, conference uh, that we met about today, occurs in November, the next conference will be that blended learning conference and workshop, which takes place April 23rd and 24th in Milwaukee. The call for uh, presentations is open for that conference, and I urge you all to submit your proposals if you haven't done so already. The uh, CFP is open through October 21st, and if you have any questions on that, feel free to contact anyone at Sloan C. Um, Katie and I are available to answer any questions on that. And at this point, I'll just uh, turn it over. Uh, we'll shut the mic off for a minute. If you have a question, raise your hand or type it in the uh, chat box here, and one of us will answer it for you. So while we're waiting uh, to see if anybody has any questions, I do want to mention that as an on-site attendee, one of the benefits that you have, and I, I kind of alluded to this in the chat box um, earlier when uh, Ray was talking about featured sessions, and I pointed out the fact that all of the featured sessions are being live webcast, which means they're recorded and available for on-demand viewing as well. 
And one of the benefits of being an on-site attendee in Orlando is you come to the conference, you get to attend all of the sessions, uh, partake in the networking and all the events that go on there, and then post-conference, you have access to all of those recorded sessions, the keynote, plenary, featured, best in tracks, whatever sessions we're recording, we actually record out of six rooms plus the uh, general session room for the keynote and plenaries. All of those sessions are available to you for on-demand viewing um, as part of your conference registration. There's no additional fee to you for that. So basically what that allows you to do is, um, you know, let's say there's a featured session going on, but there's another session that you really wanted to attend. That featured session's being recorded. You can go to the other session and then watch the featured session on demand, um, literally right after it happens. Uh, we, we send the link out with all the on-demand about a, a week after the conference, but um, I believe that if you really wanted to, you could um, access, I think uh, our IT director sends out the instructions where you can access uh, that recording um, immediately right after it's happened. So there's, um, there's a lot of benefits to being um, an attendee of the conference, and this is one of the major benefits, is, is having access to all of those recorded sessions. Uh, Christine, there was a question about uh, from the University of Wyoming about any events for uh, new members, and uh, certainly we have one for first-time attendees. Do I recall that that's is that Thursday morning? Um, perhaps uh, you've got that on your schedule, Christine. Um, I think John Bourne leads a bit of a discussion, uh, and uh, sometimes we have some fun events for them. Right, that's a good point, and I actually forgot to put that on the slide about the special event, so thank you for bringing that up. Uh, yes, Thursday morning we have the uh, at Continental Breakfast, which starts at 8 a.m. We have a newcomer welcome, um, and at that, uh, John Bourne and the Sloan Sea staff are all there, and they present, you know, basically some information. What is Sloan Sea all about? Answer your questions. Um, it's an opportunity to meet other newcomers. A lot of people that have come to our conferences year after year also come and attend and it's good to talk with them at your table and, and get more information. Uh, we give out prizes. It's just a lot of fun. And that'll occur Thursday morning during breakfast. Um, and each morning after breakfast we have a daily update where uh, Peter and Ray will answer uh, or provide you with the schedule for the day and highlights for the day. Um, and then we'll go into the plenary address for that day. So that's kind of how each morning works. Um, obviously, the other events which uh, Ray had, I mean, uh, Peter had mentioned, sorry, uh, lots of, of networking events. We have, you know, coffee breaks, networking coffee breaks in the exhibit hall each morning and afternoon. The uh, welcome reception, which is a big event, the poster session, the awards lunch, which we you know would love everyone um, who to attend. It's it's you know a very inspiring program, and the uh, dessert reception at Epcot on Thursday evening, which is really going to be a lot of fun. So, lots of opportunities to meet people. Well, if there are no other questions, uh, I'll be online here. I'll wait till everybody uh, leaves the room in case anybody has questions that they want to ask. I thank you for attending today. We hope that we will see you at the conference um, in November. And certainly, if you have any questions that we didn't answer here today, feel free to email us, and we'll get back to you right away on those. So have a great day, and uh, we'll talk to you soon.